What's it like living in downtown San Diego 2024? Well, I'm gonna tell you exactly what comprises this beautiful city. We're gonna talk about everything as far as what the city living is like, why people choose to work and live, what brings them out here, and the future projects. There's so many different projects that are comp comprising downtown. And lastly, the very last thing that you're gonna to wanna to know are the cons of living in downtown San Diego. Stay tuned. Guys, if you're looking to move to San Diego, our channel is dedicated to getting you all information relocated to San Diego. I've been doing this for a few years, and this year we want to blow it out of the water. We want to create a community. So if you have anything you want to see specifically, you want to learn more about, let us know down in the comment below. If you're looking to move to San Diego, you can call, text, email us, any social platform that you find, and we'd be more than happy to help you. Now let's get started with the video. The first thing I need to know about downtown San Diego is there are eight different neighborhoods. Now, I'm not going to run you through every individual neighborhood, but I'm going to tell you the major ones that most commonly are heard about. So we have the Gaslamp District. This is where all the nightlife is at. So if you like the clubs, Friday, Saturday, where you like to go out, you like good music, they have different types of uh, genres that they play. So I know that there are country bars. There's also, you know, hip hop clubs. And then there's also things for like reggaeton. Like if you like that sort of music. I'm I'm Latino, so it's actually a surprise that they're starting to come out with more clubs every single year, and they're constantly opening new things to do. So if you're young and you're looking to get out there, or if you're someone who just likes to experience a nightlife, this is going to be an area you're going to be really attracted to. Now we go to somewhere like Little Italy. Little Italy is where all the walkability is just prime. It's just prime place to to walk, to look at all the boutiques, the restaurants, specifically Italian restaurants. So if you're looking for I get spaghetti, if you're looking for a good pizza, this is where you go, especially pairing it with a good wine. Most people's first dates are in Little Italy. Everyone, for some reason, likes to go there for date night. And uh, you'll see them in massive droves if you go Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But one of the things that I think people love about Little Italy the most is the farmer's market. This is where walkability meets, you know, consumerism. <laughs> now, all jokes aside, you, you walk down, you have 70 plus vendors, you have live music. It is just an energy that you don't get in many different places. There are some other farmers markets throughout San Diego County, but I find that Little Italy is probably ranked number one out of all places within San Diego. And it's not for any reason other than that, they deliver on what they have. I mean, the food there is extremely delicious. They have little book stops, book stores outside, which is kind of interesting. You know, we don't really see that often. Um, and then they have also your knickknacks, you know, your, the jewelry that you're looking to, to buy. I'm not a huge farmer's market person, but if I were, I'd be at Little Italy every Saturday. It's Sunday, they don't have it. The other thing about Little Italy is it's extremely aesthetic during any time of the season. So if you have Christmas, for instance, they really decorate, they really do it up. It really feels like you're in just a home away from home. So if you're not really, if you're not living in Little Italy, it's just, it feels so nice to just go there and visit. Now, another neighborhood is we have the East Village. This is where Petco Park is located. And if you haven't been to Petco Park, well, I'm telling you, you're missing out on a whole different type of experience. I mean, you're talking about balls flying overhead, having the potential to hit you, but you know, it's all good if you have a, you have a mint. So I'll tell you, one of my first experiences going to Petco Park is not being able to see when a ball was lunged up in the air and I'm close to the front row, which you think would be a good seat until you find out that if they hit a foul ball and it's coming your way, you're going to get boinked in the head. And let me tell you, it's not going to be, it's not going to be a good time. But either than that, other than the risk of getting hit in the head, I'm telling you, it's one of the most fun things. Like the whole experience, they have the announcers playing music in between every player going up the bat. You have obviously the food there. The food there is, is nice. It's a little bit on the expensive side, but hey, you're there for the experience and experiences cost money. So this is one of those things that I always recommend someone to do, especially when they're visiting San Diego, is just visit Petco Park, go walk around the East Village, you can go bar hopping, you can check out the new restaurants, and it's super walkable. So if you take an Uber down to downtown, you'll, you'll find yourself in a place where you can just easily get from place to place. But if you're driving to downtown, that, now that's a different story, but we're gonna save that for the very end. We're just gonna keep moving along with this video. Now, a common question that I get asked is, uh, why do people choose to live in downtown? I mean, I've heard so many things on the news that it, you know, it could have different negative connotations but most of the time i find that people love city lifestyle i mean if you're looking for something fast-paced active where you can get to 
just really get that social aspect in. I, I was really surprised. There are so many different networking groups in downtown that happen every single day. So depending on what you're interested in, there's so many different opportunities to go and meet with these people and grow your connection and your network and actually create long lasting relationships with friends over the length of time. One example of this is the University Club. It's on the 32nd floor, I think. It, it's somewhere high where you see all of Coronado and you see all these beautiful views. You even see that planes coming in from overhead and landing. It, one of the things that they offer, you, you have these mixes where you get to meet with young professionals or professionals of any background. So they'll have real estate events. So they'll have, hey, engineers come out for the night. And all these people come from different backgrounds. So if you're looking to really get active in a space where you, you take your professional career seriously, this could be a place where you could elevate to the next level, just meeting the right person, getting connected and introduced to different people. Now, the other part to living in downtown and why people choose it is just the walkability. You get to walk all over the place. Like I've mentioned so many different times. I mean, you could easily walk all of downtown. I personally have gone from the East Village, the Marina to Little Italy, and it takes you about 15 to 20 minutes to cover that ground, which is really nice. Now, if you're someone who likes to run, this is probably one of the best places to run. It's made for running. So you just run around the bay and you know you come back. I've actually done a marathon back a few years ago. It was a 5K and it was, they shut down on the streets. Everyone was having a good time. Afterwards, you know, you go grab a beer because you know you, you put in all that effort, but it's just an environment where I feel like most people just wanna get out and go and not have to rely so heavily on a car. And I think as time goes on, it's gonna definitely be more transportation friendly. We, you have the trolley lines, you have the bike lanes where you can take. I know I have a friend uh, Terrence that you guys know, uh, he loves those scooters, man. He will go up and down downtown on a scooter and you can't tell that guy anything when he has his headphones in. But overall, I think that the walkability what really attracts people is that you just don't have to be tied down to, oh man, I gotta drive 15, 20 minutes to the next place or to the next restaurant. And downtown has so many different restaurants where if you want Indian food, if you want sushi, if you want Spanish food, all these ethnic type of foods all across the world are located in one central space and it's within walking distance. That's crazy to even think about. But I think it's gonna even get even better with all the, with the redevelopment of projects that are coming up. And that's what we'll segue into next. Oh, and before I forget, before we go to the future downtown projects, let me tell you, the views from these places are amazing. I mean, you go to the top of the radiant, you see everything. I mentioned the university club a little earlier. It's a social club. You see all of you from there. And if you're lucky enough to live in, you know, on a floor, probably 10 and above, you get to see everything. It's so nice to look at it. Most people don't really, they really don't think it's important until you're literally sitting on a balcony overlooking everything and you're like, wow, this is what I get to wake up to. This is really nice. So anyways, let's go to the future projects. Alrighty. So we have the future projects of downtown San Diego. We have the Seaport Village that's gonna get redeveloped. They're gonna add hotel space. They're gonna add commercial space. They're gonna make it more transit friendly, more pedestrian friendly for people to walk through and just feel comfortable going from place to place. Right now, it's under construction. So it's, uh, it's a little wop wop. You know, you got little boutiques, you have restaurants that have been there for a long time, but you know, don't really excite anyone because they're a little overpriced, I'm gonna be honest with you. But over time, that's gonna change. I'm really excited what it's gonna look like in five to 10 years. The other part is that they're taking older office buildings and transforming them into residential spaces, condos, mixed use spaces. So it's like a work and play lifestyle so you get to work in a place where you live like they have offices down below and you live up top and that's really nice for the person who just wants to have everything in one spot and i think as time goes on downtown san diego is going to you know take in into account a lot of those work-life balance it's going to be a place where you get to do everything that you need to in one hub and not have to travel or commute or spend time in traffic Petco Park is awesome because you have yeah, obviously the baseball game and the chance of getting hit in the head. That's a story that I told you a little earlier, but the other cool part is around it. They're going to start to redevelop those spaces into parks and they're going to really make it more exciting for the residents that currently live there. Right now, there's a lot of restaurants and things to do, but right now Petco Park is really the main attraction is what you go there for other than living there. But if you're looking for like, hey, I want something more a little bit more active, more, you know, just it's kind of like the Carlsbad Village where you kind of have everything within walking distance and easy to get from place point A to point B. And they're starting to create more parks for everyone. 
So they have three different trolley lines here in downtown San Diego. They have about 62 stations. And I think over time, they're gonna make it connect to almost every part. I actually met a lawyer who actually worked in downtown, but lived in Encinitas. And he would always take the trolley up, trolley back home, trolley up and trolley back home. And he said it was gave him, gave him peace of mind of not having to worry about traffic, less stress, and he gets to work on the way. He gets to work a little earlier on the road as opposed to just driving in mindless traffic. So that's one of the cool things about downtown is that you have that commuter friendly, that transport friendly. And I think over time, downtown San Diego's projects are gonna be, are, are just gonna be ongoing incoming. They have about $15 billion going into the redevelopment of downtown San Diego. So far, they've spent about 1.45 billion of it. And I think it's just gonna keep going up because more people want more downtown city lifestyle. Now, this is a figure I wanted to share with you guys. This is, a, this is what really is gonna tell you about what the future growth looks like. Expected to be 90,000 residents and 165,000 jobs created by 2030. This is gonna absorb the majority of the future growth here in San Diego. And I think that's why you see so much money being spent is because so many people have already have high demand for downtown. And to meet that demand, we gotta, you know, make some changes, invest more into this city. Now, finally, we get to the end, the cons of living in downtown San Diego. Why wouldn't you want to live in this beautiful city? Well, here, there might be many different reasons. I know personally, parking is probably one of the top reasons. It's really expensive to find a place that has multiple parking spots for one unit. They actually tack on extra fees, and by the end of it, you're paying a lot more than you would if you lived in a suburb, or somewhere in the like around downtown. The other thing is, you know, if you're looking to commute somewhere else, it, it can be kind of a hassle to get on those freeways, especially during prime time traffic between the hours of seven and nine. It can get really congested because you're not the only one who's looking to leave. And also the same way coming back in, that 163 freeway gets constantly compact. Every time I see it at 5 p.m., I'm like, oh man, that's going to take a while. And especially if there's an accident, it can be, you know, bumper to bumper traffic. The other part to downtown San Diego that most people, you know, kind of bat an eye is just they believe that it's this huge community of unsheltered, just endlessly, you know, taking part in uh, destroying the city. And I'll, I'll tell you, there's some validity to it, not entirely. I mean, the city is working really hard to, uh, you know, they have a lot of programs to do outreach to help them get back on their feet. They have designated places where they can actually sleep and live out of. And then I think over time, it's going to get better. Obviously it's not perfect. And California has as a whole have had issues with the unsheltered and figuring out solutions. But downtown, I think San Diego and as a whole has done a great job of trying to address those needs. And it's not as bad as the news makes it seem. I know a lot of people believe that San Diego is just crawling with people all over the place. And that's just simply not the case. You'll see it from time to time. It's just one of those unfortunate situations where someone meets, there are good people in bad situations and that just so happens to be the case. If this is something that, oh, we have music back. I don't even know if they can pick this up, but we have some light music back there. Now, the other con to living in downtown San Diego is that it can be a little unsafe, just kind of depending on which parts of San Diego you live in. I know that some areas are very heavily protected, like the marina, Little Italy seems to always have patrols going by and making sure things are, are safe. But if you get closer to the freeways, you know, obviously you'll see tents up. You probably wouldn't want to walk in the dead of night to go walking across those neighborhoods. So just be very mindful where you're at, where you're at. And if you don't know, just ask the local. They'll tell you exactly which areas to avoid. I find that whenever I move to an area, if I ask someone who actually lives there, they tend to be open and honest about all the things that annoy them and all the things that they enjoy. So this is just one of those things that I would consider if I were you. All right, well, that is living in downtown San Diego. It's not for everybody, but it could be for you if you're looking for that city lifestyle. And if you're looking for more information on moving to San Diego, we'll subscribe to our channel. And I'll tell you what, I'll see you guys in the next video and you're not gonna wanna miss out. Talk to you soon.